What's happening guys, it's Shane here. Welcome to the channel again. And today I'm gonna to be talking about one of my favorite careers, which is sales development representative, also known as tech sales, software sales, and business development representative. I'm just gonna go ahead and refer to it as tech sales from now on. So tech sales is one of about only 12 careers that in my opinion, after doing an extensive amount of research, are really good, have really solid statistics, but you can also get into them without a college degree or without any experience. So if you're in a career that you really don't enjoy right now, but you don't have any experience, you can shift over into tech sales relatively easily. Now, there are not very many careers that fall under this category. Uh, the way that I look at careers is extremely stringent and it is not easy to get on this list of about 12 careers or so, but tech sales is one of them. Now, in doing research on tech sales, I came across a bunch of different content online. And one story that popped up was Abdul. So Abdul is a very young guy and he was able to get into tech sales without a college degree or any background experience. So I reached out to the person who posted the video and I was able to get them to come on the channel. And I asked them a bunch of key questions that is stuff that you really wanna know, like how much can you expect to make? How long it takes to get into this? Uh, how much can you make right away? And then how much can you expect to make mid-career? How flexible is it? Can you do it remotely? etc. So without further ado, you're not going to want to miss out on this one. Make sure to watch it all the way through. We are going to jump into it right now. What's happening, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Shane here, and I am extremely excited to welcome onto the channel another special guest. Today, I'm welcoming, welcoming Abdul onto the channel. Abdul is a sales development representative. Basically, what that means is he is in tech sales. So thank you so much, Abdul, for coming onto the channel. No problem. No problem. All right. So let's go ahead and start at the beginning. Um, first of all, I think people kind of want to know what exactly is tech sales and sales development representative. Can you can uh, just give like a layman's term, like explain like I'm five it's just somebody who's never heard of it before uh, explanation of what that is. Right. So basically what tech sales is, the, the role I'm in, basically we sell software to you know, businesses. So, you know, business to business. And what I do is I, you know, I'm on the phones prospecting businesses that would be a great fit for the product that we're selling. And I'm just calling them up, um, you know, sending emails to them. And my job is to book as many meetings as possible and get them, you know, so sold on the product and, you know, make sure they're fit. So and I think that a lot of people, because I've, I've done sales before, and there's kind of this perception that people have of salesmen is like, oh, it's like a used car salesman type of thing. And that can be true in some like B2C type roles when you're like a business selling to customers. It does, you know, you can have some situations like that. But B2B sales is uh, a little bit different. Can you, would you, would you agree with me? Yeah, it, it is. It is vastly different, like, especially when you said, like, you know, the, the whole notion of, like, car, you know, sa car salesman. It's not like that in B2B. So what it is, the approach is, is like, very consultative. Um, we really focus on making sure that there's a fit. We, we're, not, we're not jamming products in people's faces, like, hey, buy this, buy this. No, we don't do that. We, we do something called discovery. And what discovery is, is basically you're asking them questions to see if there's their fit, like, Oh, um, what are you doing for your business? What are your goals? Really taking time to really understand and assess whether or not what whatever we're selling to them could be something that you know would benefit them and help them. So it really is more so a consultative, uh, you know, doctor approach rather than a straight up, you know, stereotypical uh, used carsman uh, sales. Got it. All right. And um, let's go ahead and kind of just start at the beginning because you have a really cool story. So let's start at the beginning and talk about before you became uh, a sales development representative, like uh, before you, you were kind of in a situation, you're trying to decide what career you want to go into and all that sort of thing. Can you kind of start at the beginning and just tell us that part of the story? Yeah. So let's go back in the past. So alrighty. So first of all, I did not go to college because in the back of my head since I was 15, I was like, I want to be entrepreneurial. I want to, I want to do stuff that's, you know, kind of outside of, you know, society, like, you know, something that goes against conventional thinking. I'm like, let me, let me try something different. So right after high school, I actually, you know, worked in retail sales at the mall. I was just working at this, you know, 
sales job. Well, not really a sales job, but like, you know, you're talking with people, uh, retail. I guess that you could say that's like my introduction to sales because, you know, we're really focused on selling, you know, clothes, shoes and whatnot. Um, and then it was, I didn't get enough hours at that role. So I had to get an- another role. And it's funny that the next role I got was I was working a warehouse job, a temporary warehouse job. And it, it, you know, it wasn't the best. Um, that job wasn't fun, but, you know, it made me save some money. But there was something that really dawned on my head, like, man, I need to, I need to, you know, do something different. What, what is available to me without having a college degree? So, you know, I was working this warehouse job. Uh, COVID happened. You know, COVID happened. I got laid off you know, got the benefits. That was a good thing about it. But so because of this happening, I was like, okay, this is a perfect opportunity for me to, you know, try something different. Um, So I searched up how to get a sales role without a college degree, because what's funny was a friend of mine, well, not a friend, but a coworker of mine, when I was working this warehouse job, said, hey, you should go into sales. Um, You're pretty charismatic. You know how to talk to people well. And I'm like, okay, let let me explore this. Let's see what sales uh, could do. So during COVID, I was just searching up, you know, how to get a sales role um, without a college degree. And, you know, the rest was history. So before sales, I was working warehouse jobs. I was working retail jobs, just kind of all over the place, really trying to find myself and really get into that, you know, transition. Okay, awesome. So you were in this situation where you didn't want to go to college because you knew that you wanted to go kind of an entrepreneurial route and you didn't think college is going to help you accomplish that. Um, So you were kind of on the job search. You were looking for different jobs and job opportunities, which was kind of hard, especially at that time. And then what happened that led you to sales development representative? What was the discovery that led you to become a, a get into this career? Well, the discovery that, you know, led me to this career was it, it started with my what what I wanted uh, my, my life to look like in the next 10 years or so. So for me, my long term goal is to eventually, you know, have my own business. And a lot of business owners, what a common denominator is that you have to be good at sales, you have to know, you know, you have to know how to sell, you need to know, you know, business to business stuff like one, one author that I really respect, well, Brian Tracy, actually had a similar path, he didn't go to college, he worked these funny jobs, and then he got into sales. So that was like, okay, sales could possibly be like college for entrepreneurship for me. So I was like, okay, let's get a sales role. Perfect. So it aligns very well with my long term goals. So I'm like, yes, this is what ex- this is what I need to do. I need to go into sales. This is just going to be perfect. So that's really what kind of, you know, motivated me to get into sales. I was searching up, okay, how to get a sales role without, you know, a college degree. And Troy's website popped up on a search query, his blog. And the blog titled, how to, you know, obviously what I searched up, how to get into sales without a college degree. So I read the blog. And I'm like, wow, this is very informative. This is very, very informative. So after reading that blog post, there was another blog post that said, okay, how college is kind of obsolete. There was another blog post. And then his book was there. And then I read his book. And I'm like, whoa, this really reaffirmed my thoughts on why college is kind of unnecessary. And then I was like, is there a way for me to kind of get in contact with Troy to help me get a sales job without a college degree and what and what popped up on the website was yeah book a one-on-one um consultation I'm like okay uh, let's let's get this started let's let's get it going so that's how I found Troy that's how I found course careers was just a simple you know search query got it and yeah I, I really love how you brought that point up uh one thing that I stress over and over again on my channel is only go to college guys if it helps you achieve your goals okay don't go to college if you're just you know confused about what you want to do in your life and you you want to like try different things out that is an incredibly expensive way of figuring out what you want to do with your life and you're probably going to end up going to college and regretting the degree that you get so only go to college after you have a plan and you determine that college is the way that it's or that it's a way that's going to help you achieve your goals And uh, one thing you mentioned, uh, Troy's book, and I I read his book as well. And one uh, statistic that was in his book, and I thought that I knew all the stats, but actually 
I didn't know this one until I read his book and I looked it up and confirmed it. In Switzerland, college is actually free and only about 20 to 25% of people choose to go to free college in Switzerland. Contrast that to the United States where college is, is super expensive. It costs you an arm and a leg and about 70% of people choose to go to college in the US. So we're the weird ones. We're the ones that are in the bubble. Uh, we have this weird obsession with college and higher education that for some reason people think it's necessary. It's the only way you can get educated. When in Switzerland, there's many other ways that people get educated. They do apprenticeships, internships, uh, they learn on their own. Sometimes they just go into an entry level role and work their way up from there. So yeah, that, I'm really glad you brought that up because I wanted to kind of uh, talk about that as well. What would you say the pay was like uh, at that first entry level role that you were at? Mm. Actually, sorry, I don't want to assume you're comfortable sharing that. So if you're not, just kind of uh, let me know, like <laughs> generally speaking, what people uh, in the same situation would expect to be paid at kind of like an entry level role. Right, no worries. I'll just, I'll spill the beans and give you the, the meat and potatoes. So the pay, what it looks like is basically, you know, a base commit, a, the base is 50,000. So I'm in Canada actually. So that's 50,000 and on track right now, it is like 75,000. So basically that's the potential. Let's say I hit all my quota. And I'm on pace to, you know, hit 75,000 um, a year. Wow, that is yeah. incredible for an entry level job. That is right. like that is just insanely good for an entry level job. Yeah. And there's actually uh there's another YouTuber. Um I'm trying to get him on my channel. We're kind of going back and forth on emails right now. And uh he uh is a little bit further on in his career and uh he's actually making over 500,000 a year oh, wow. in tech sales. Um so he's about 10 years into his career but yeah, I mean, the sky is the limit when it comes to uh, sales and especially tech sales because sales is such a valuable skill in and of itself. That's one another thing I've kind of talked about on the channel. And you're spot on when you say it's going to help you uh, when you're starting you know, a business later on in your life as well. It's definitely going to help you with that. Um, I talk about like there's kind of five or so skills, but sales, marketing, um, and coding are skills that have extreme leverage. You can basically leverage them to reach like hundreds of thousands or millions of people, which is extremely rare to have in a skill. And then another thing I talk about is how the technology industry has the most opportunity out of any industry out there. You could sort of argue finance is pretty good as well, um, especially at the upper levels. But I think when you combine salary as well as quality of life, Technology is just, it's the best for sure. Right. Um, right. Health is also pretty good when it comes to job stability. But yeah, technology, it, it's definitely the top one uh, if you just look at the full picture. And so when you combine that, that super valuable skill of sales and probably what is the best industry in the world to work in, that's just a killer combination for sure. It is indeed. It is indeed. You'll be raking in that paper. So... <laughs> It's beautiful. It's 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 a great um, position to be in, especially again, as I said, where I'm coming from. So it's just like, wow. This, first of all, I was shocked. I'm like, wow. This 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 is out here. Like, I can just go on Google, train myself, get help, and boom, land a role like this, which would probably require a four year degree from for, for people who aren't really familiar with this. Like, it's just insane. And I'm still shocked that I've made it this far and I'm actually closing in on one year at the role. So it's just, it's just amazing. Yeah, that's really awesome. And, and Troy actually has been kind of, he just told me that he's been partnering with more companies as well. So at this point he basically kind of has a partnership with these companies and he can uh, help people to kind of get roles in, in a lot of these companies as well. So uh, get their first like entry level role. And some of the companies will actually drop their college degree requirement because a lot of companies, unfortunately, still have that, that box that you need to tick of the uh, college degree requirement, but they actually drop it uh, for people who go through course careers uh, because of the fact that they just think that he's really good at teaching people like solid fundamentals of tech sales. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's kind of one of those things where in college, uh, marketing and sales and just business in general, I mean, I guess there's some corporate stuff you can learn in college, but Business in general is something where the only way you can learn it is to just do it. Like it's kind of like riding a bike. You can read all the books in the world about riding a bike. 
you can watch like, you know, really good high quality training and stuff like that about riding a bike. You could even hire like Lance Armstrong to teach you how to ride a bike. But in, until you actually jump on the bike and try to ride it, you're just, you're really not going to know how to ride a bike. So, you know, uh, that's kind of one of the, the flaws of college, in my opinion, when they try to teach people like marketing or, or sales is, is you're, it's very theoretical and abstract and, and eclectic. And you just, you're, you're teaching people things that maybe they worked 30 years ago or 20 years ago, but marketing and sales are fluid. They, they change all the time. Things change in the environment. It's like the meta changes like a video game. And, right. you know, if you're not learning what the newest stuff is, if you're not in the trenches learning that, you're just not going to know, uh, you're not going to be really good at that skill. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, work, work experience is king, especially when it comes to business related stuff like marketing, sales, uh, entrepreneurship and that sort of thing. There, there's no substitution for work experience. Just generally speaking, like how long would you say it takes people to kind of get into this? Uh, with uh, Troy's help. And by the way, guys, Troy has like a free training. I'll put that like down in the description and maybe in the pinned comment, you can, you can check that out. There's like a free training down below. Uh, that's kind of going to help you determine whether tech sales is a good choice for you or not. Um, but yeah, like generally speaking, how long would you say it would take like the average person to kind of get into uh, a tech sales position? Really? It really depends. It really depends. I would have to say, it comes down to one thing and one thing only like motivation, like how motivated are you to break into sales? I think the more motivated you are, the sooner you can get into sales. So it could, if you're really motivated, it can probably take you uh, a month to two months. Um, so anywhere from like two to six months, you can break through. But I think it really comes down to like motivation and just like how excited you are and how, how, how just like pumped you are to, to break through into sales. I think that's uh, a very huge, huge thing. Got it. And let's say, I guess this is another good question. Uh, another thing I really like talking about on my channel is flexibility. And let's say, uh, uh, God forbid, you decide tech sales isn't for you like a year from now or something. You're just like, you know what? I just, ah, I don't really want to do tech sales for the rest of my life. Would you say that the skill of learning sales is going to help you in other areas of your life? Like if you decide to go into a different career path or something along those lines? Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Listen, when you're in sales, you're basically in a position where you're talking to people and you're basically understanding how people work and you're communicating what motivates people. And that skill alone is just transcends in my opinion it transcends sales and it's just a basic life skill if you know how to communicate well if you know how to persuade people and you know kind of mo and kind of help them see something that they have a pain point in or try and help them that is going to do you wonders in life just the confidence you have knowing that let's say in sales you're speaking to like a ceo of like i don't know like a 500 person company that's going to give you a certain type of feeling that you can carry on with you for the rest of your life. So yes, I think sales is a tremendous role that will just, you know, affect all areas of your life. And even if technology sales, isn't something that you want to do for the rest of your life, whatever you choose to do, wherever you choose, whatever career path you choose, you choose and want to go through, it's just going to help tremendously. So I would say yes. And in, yes, indeed. Yes. Yes, I 100% agree with you. And uh, sales was actually, I would have to say when I think back on all the different jobs I tried, because I tried all kinds of different stuff. Sales was actually my favorite job that I ever had. Like I, I didn't necessarily make the most money at it. I made good money. But it was you know, I made more as a pharmacist, for instance, but sales was definitely my favorite job I ever had. I mean, it is just so much fun going out there talking to people. And even if like, I consider myself to be an introvert. And even if you're an introvert, um, it just helps you come out of your shell quite a bit um, if you do a sales job. And I did a video on this, but the job that the most like millionaires and billionaires have in common in their background is sales. Like almost all of them did a sales job at some point in their life. It's not marketing, even though marketing's great. It's not coding, even though coding's great. It's actually sales. 
So there are many different career options for you to uh, go into after sales if you decide that you don't want to be under that kind of like, you know, commission type lifestyle. Uh, first of all, you can rise up in the sales ranks. You can become like a, a sales uh, manager. Um, you, a lot of people do like VP of sales. That, that's an option for you that there's VP of sales out there that make like $10 million a year. Um, you can become a CEO or you can do the route that a lot of people do and they eventually start their own company at some point. So they're, they're working in this industry. They get a lot of industry specific knowledge. They see a gap in the market. They see a problem that hasn't been solved by anybody else. And then they're like, you know what, I'm going to start a company that solves this problem and your chances of success are going to be much higher with that skill set that you have uh, of sales for sure. For sure. I would love to add this. Um, what I would love to say is um, just know to, to all, to everyone watching, just know that, you know, what you've been taught is not everything and that there is more to what's being taught in school, especially that now that we have the internet. So really use the power of the internet to really find what you truly want to do and know that there's, we live in an age where there's alternative ways in doing whatever you want to do. So in this instance, you know, tech sales doesn't require a college degree. And as I've said earlier, it's all really about motivation. Everything's about motivation. Everything's about how much you really desire something. So if you have that desire, if you have that motivation, and if you kind of think outside of the box on what's been taught to you, then you can make anything happen. That's that's all I want to say. Like where where I'm coming from, if I told myself I would be in this position, I wouldn't believe myself. I'm like, what? I'm working in a in Vancouver downtown and in a, in a, from warehouse to to working downtown in Vancouver. That's what. So it, it it's it's possible. The world is yours to that cliche, but Scarface. But yeah, just. Just wanted to throw that out there. I, I love that last part. And I, I actually used to live right next to Vancouver. I used to live on the border of Canada. So I'd go to Vancouver all the time. Really? Before COVID, yeah. I would go up to uh, Vancouver all the time. Beautiful you, city. Awesome. So thank you again for coming onto the channel, Abdul. I really appreciate you sharing your story. Uh, again, there is a free training. I will put that down below. And if you do decide to use uh, Course Careers Troy's uh, company to try to get into tech sales, I do have a $50 off uh, coupon code, which I will put down there as well. Uh, so thanks again for coming on the channel. I really appreciate it. It was my pleasure, Shane. It was, it was great speaking with you. I hope uh, someone really got inspired by this and just know that, you know, anything's possible and you can change the trajectory of your career path just like that.